Hey guys, welcome back to the uh, new video in the tutorial series introduction to Kubernetes. Today uh, we are going to talk about stateful set. Little bit about me, I am Jainis, uh, a software developer. These are the links where you can follow me on GitHub, Twitter and LinkedIn. Let's get started. So what is stateful set? Stateful set is very similar to deployment and it is used to manage stateful application. Now, what are stateful applications? So stateful applications are the application which, uh, you know, needs to save the states or a file system or, or a storage, right? So some example of stateful applications are like, you know, any database you can think of, be it Postgres, MySQL, or any Redis or any, any cluster uh, that requires access to their local file system and which needs to persist the local data. Right. Uh, so that, that's why Kubernetes came up with the stateful set. It manages deployment and scaling of the pod. But, uh, you know, unlike a deployment, it uh, gives uh, unique ordering to pods. And it can uh, manage the order of uh, creating the pods or removing the pods during the scaling up or scaling down or even for rolling upgrades. Now, why to use stateful set? So as I mentioned, state when you delete or scale stateful set or pods managed by stateful set, you know, it will make sure that the scaling happens in a particular order and the volume attached to particular pods will not get affected, right? It will preserve the state of that volume. So in use cases where you need stable uh, network identifiers, you can use stateful set where, where you need persistent storage for each pod, you can use stateful set. You know, when uh, your application needs a graceful deployment, for example, you know, you are using some application uh, which, is, uh, which allows a cluster and you can upgrade each node of the cluster or each uh, you know part of the cluster independently but you need to do that in order that's where stateful set comes handy think of uh, you know ro doing a rolling upgrade of a mysql MySQ server and obviously as i mentioned automated rolling update uh, stateful set makes it easy so this is how the stateful set looks like you know let's say you have a headless service and you want to deploy multiple replicas of that headless service. So think of a Postgres uh, cluster. And each Postgres needs some local storage to maintain the data, right, the, the files. So each stateful set will create their own persistent volume claim, which is bound to a persistent volume. Yeah, now volume can be created on your local host or basically host machine or somewhere else depending on the storage class in one of the video we'll talk about the storage class as well but this is how it will look like so let's get started and deploy our first stateful application now i have uploaded the code in the same github repository introduction to kubernetes uh, i have created a directory called stateful set if you go inside that you will see this file stateful set.yml so here I have specified kind is equal is a stateful set. That's how it recognizes that it needs to create and maintain this pods via stateful set. Again, we are using uh, three replicas of the node version application, right? And this is how it identifies uh, what container it needs to run. So we are going to run the node version uh, with a uh, version tag 2.3.1. We are exposing pod 3000. We are specifying resources, lower and upper limit. We are specifying a readiness and liveness prob on port 3000 to make sure that application is running up and healthy. And also we are mounting a volume for logs and it will be mounted uh, to where source app logs, which is a directory inside the Docker image of node version. And we are specifying volume claim template. So if you need to persist a volume, this is mandatory. Uh, you will provide a template where you will provide uh, detail about what should be the access mode. Usually it's read write once. You know, each pod will have their own storage volume. In this case, it will be of one gig. Uh, with read write once, only one pod at a time can write to that persistent volume. So let's get started. I have already checked out the code. You can do git checkout if you are running it for first time. And let's deploy our stateful set first. 
using the command kubectl fly and let's uh, as it's mentioned the stateful site is created let's just check the value of it and you can see stateful site is created it has created it, it desired state is three replicas of the pod and let's create the service as well to expose the uh, expose this uh, pod now if i do kubectl get services i should see new service being created we are using node port as i am using minikube uh, we will get the url to access the running node application uh, it's not yet deployed so it will take some time let's do kubectl let's check status of the rollout for the stateful set the commands are already in the readme so you can see that it says waiting for two pods which means one is already deployed let's do kubectl get pods and you can see the one, first pod is running as soon as the first one was up and running and healthy it started creating the second pod now once the second will be up and running uh, and healthy as soon as it becomes healthy you will see that it will start creating the third pod and the naming because we are setting three replicas so it start from zero like array index of array so the first pod is named as zero then one and the new one that will come up which will be three or two uh, because our size is three so the maximum number will be two and if we go and try to access the application and we can see it's running and the version of image is 2.3.1 <clears throat> so we are able to access the application now let's do one thing uh, let's see let's describe the stateful set and we can see that you know these are the things that we have specified in the yaml right and it's running version 2.3.1 of that application a node version application it has mounted a volume right and it has created three sta uh, stateful set or three pods as a part of this stateful set let's uh, go or let's just tail log of one of the pod so if we can do kubectl get pod and let's pick the zero and we can see uh, it's up and running and we can see all the request log right so service will be load balancing the request to th these three pods now let's scale uh, the uh, the stateful set we are scaling the replica from three to five when we do that we will see that it will start adding new pod or creating new pod and adding it to the same service and it's increasing the value uh, of each new pod created by index of one so we will see uh, two new pod being created as soon as the pod uh, stateful set pod three is healthy it will start creating the new pod as well and if we do rollout status uh, for stateful set uh, we will see that you know we still need to uh, create or it's waiting for two new pod to be ready uh, to be able to serve the request Right, so let's wait uh, till all the new pod uh, pods get healthy yeah so it's running uh, it's going to run the last one now so this was the scaling you can see that you know it's scaling in the order even if i uh, now if i delete the deployment it will start deleting them uh, in a reverse order so it will remove the fourth pod first then third then second then first and then the zeroth one right now once this healthy we will do one more thing we will upgrade uh, the application right now it's running version 2.3.1 we will upgrade it to run version 2.3.2 uh, and when we do a ro rolling upgrade using stateful site you will see that it's updating or it's upgrading uh, the pod one by one so let's uh, do get pods where all pods are running and healthy right now i'm i will be running a command to change the image version from 2.2.2.3.1 to 2.3.2 it's been already uh, applied so now if i do kubectl get pod i will see that it is uh, it has terminated the old pod the the one which was created last 
and replaced it with the new uh, image. So if we describe this pod, you can see that now it's running image version 2.3.2. And it will do this in the same way that it will make sure that the last created pod is you know upgraded. Then it will do the second last, and it will go in a reverse order until it replaces the every pod with the new version of the image. And you can see that it's happening. Let's check the rollout history now. It will tell us that you know we have updated the rollout. So we have two revision one with uh, image version 2.3.1 and one with image version that we just deployed and let's go and try to access the application and because some of the pod are already updated when we refresh it a couple of time we will see version 2.3 right because we have still some pod running old version so sometimes we see truthy version old version sometimes we will get the new version uh, that's because uh, you know the service is load balancing all the pod which are healthy so that's about it for stateful set yeah along with that it creates as we had specified it creates the pvc as well in our case because we created five replicas each created a volume which was mounted to each uh, pod uh, and each size of the volume is one gig so even if we scale the application down now to let's say three replicas again right it won't it will terminate the pods it will terminate the pod but it won't terminate uh, the volume and that's the because it it will always persist the volume that's the uh, advantage of using stateful side so that's about it for stateful set you know uh, if you have any question feel free to ask your question in the comment i will try to answer those if you like the video if you have learned something new uh, don't forget to give a thumbs up and please do subscribe to my channel so that uh, when i post new video for different objects of kubernetes uh, you will get the notification thank you